your miracles tonight. You are welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You are here tonight to connect with miracle. He's the way maker and he's the miracle worker. All things tonight are possible. And the Lord is calling you again to this taste manifestation of the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We know that everything we desire, everything we need, you provide today. And Lord, I pray nobody will go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name. Salvation for everyone. Healing for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Miracle for everyone. Confirm it in every life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Another amen. amen. God bless everyone. You can sit down. This is great possibilities crusade. And it is through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why every night we're talking about Jesus. We talk about him because he is the one, the Father, Heavenly Father, our God in heaven, has sent so that everything we need for the spirit, for the soul, for the body, for our present time, and for our future eternal life, everything comes through Jesus. Tonight, I'm talking on the wonderful possibilities of the word of Jesus. Wonderful possibilities of the word of Jesus. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 1 and I read from verse 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets the father in heaven god in heaven he has a word to pass on he sits on the throne of authority in heaven and he sent prophet after prophet prophet after prophet to declare his word look at verse 2 in verse 2 has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. All those prophets have come and they have spoken the word of God the Father in these last days and in the days in which we live, he has now spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world note that note that jesus the son god the father and the father god in heaven made this world the planet the sun the moon everything that was created and he calls it all the worlds by whom also he made the worlds understand then if god the father made the whole universe by the word christ he will make everything in your life everything in your life he makes the world by the son by jesus christ and jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever look at verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory the only way glory grace power can come into your life is through this Jesus and the express image of his person upholding 
all things by the word of his power upholding the sun or have scattered and fallen if Jesus were not upholding it the moon would have dropped from the sky if Jesus the final word is not holding it all the stars will fall one by one except it is they are all held up by upheld by the word of his power and gravity would have lost its effect Be but because of Christ the word he is the one that upholds all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high majesty wonder miracle surrounding him and he sits down at the right hand of majesty from on high i want you to understand one jesus the father's word, word to the whole universe and to you anything the father god the father wanted to say about your salvation about your healing about your deliverance about your perseverance and about your life eternal jesus is the father's word too jesus the foremost word anything is going to do in your life anything is going to operate in your life jesus is the foremost word when he speaks angels keep quiet when he speaks satan holds his breath when he speaks every other power in the sky on land in the sea he is the foremost word jesus the final word final word whatever he tells you that's final nobody can come no satan can come no demon can come no power can come and change that jesus is the final word is the father's word is the foremost word the final word and tonight i come to talk to you on the wonderful possibilities of the word of jesus we're looking at three things here number one there is the saving word number two there is the spoken word number three there is the sovereign word number one the saving pardoning word of jesus the word of jesus comes the salvation the word of jesus comes there is pardon and remember what he says the father said remember he is the father's word remember he is the foremost word when he forgives you your mind your conscience cannot say anything contrary he is the foremost word he is the final word when he speaks pardon when he speaks salvation to your soul no other word the king of kings has spoken the lord of lords has spoken he has the final say point number two is the spoken prevailing word of jesus when he speaks power is manifested when he speaks that is the prevailing word the spoken prevailing word of jesus number three is the sovereign perpetual word of jesus other people speak after their time their word forgotten 
other people speak after their era, after their century, after their decades. We don't think anything about their words anymore. But when Jesus speaks, it's sovereign. It has final authority. It has perpetual authority until the end of the world. The sovereign, perpetual word of Jesus. Pick them up one by one. Number one. Number one is the saving, pardoning word of Jesus. Look at Mark chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. The Father had said that. And he put it in the mouth of his Son. Because the Father now speaks by his Son unto every sinner. And whatever Jesus says to the sinner, final, the sins of the man forgiven. The Pharisees were there. What could they do? They couldn't change the salvation of that man. They couldn't change the forgiveness of that man. The man himself might be thinking, how will my sins be forgiven? I am impotent. I am weak. I am helpless. Christ has spoken. Even the thinking of the man could not change the salvation, the forgiveness, the pardon of that man. An angel could come in a dream. The foremost word, the final word had been spoken. Jesus said, son, he called him son. He called him son. He said, you are now, because your sins are pardoned, because your sins are forgiven, you are now the son in the family of God. And nothing can change that. When God speaks to you tonight, through the Lord Jesus Christ, and he says, he manifests his love to you. And he says, your sins are pardoned, and your sins are forgiven, and your soul is saved, that will not change. As you go back home, you go with salvation. As you sleep, you sleep in the joy and the happiness of salvation. You wake up tomorrow, the sleep will not cancel the word of Jesus Christ. He said, son, he said, daughter, your sins are forgiven. The father's word, the foremost word, the final word. It tells us in Luke chapter 7, in Luke chapter 7, we're looking at verse 37. It says, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, he brought an alabaster box of ointment in verse 38, and she stood at the feet behind, at his feet behind him, weeping, I began to wash his feet with the tears. How is it that Jesus sat there, and this woman came in, and as she saw Jesus the sinless, and he saw Jesus Christ the Holy One, and he saw Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ so spotless, so sinless, so white, and uh, is so heavenly. All the remembrance of our own sin, of our dirtiness, of our worthlessness came to our mind, and she felt, I'm so different. I'm sinful. 
and she regretted her life in the presence of Christ. All she could do was to weep because of the sorrow of her sin. And she, as she came, and all this was impromptu. It is nothing staged here. There is nothing that, you know, uh, was pre-planned. And the tears were falling on the feet of Jesus. And the woman did not bring handkerchief so that if they suppose, then I'll use the handkerchief and clean the tears. And there was nothing else she had. And then she took her beauty, her glory, and the highest thing on her head in her life. And she wiped. She didn't mind now. Because she saw Jesus, the final word, and she cleaned up the tears. And then we're told in verse 47, in verse 47, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. Remember that the Father's word, if Jesus says it, the Father has said it. Remember that the foremost word. If Jesus says it, the Father has confirmed it. Remember the final word. Any other thing that that Pharisee will say, in whose house they were, that if this man were a prophet, he wouldn't have allowed this woman to touch him. Because she is a sinner. That man, the Pharisee, what he said is not in the proper tense. She was a sinner. But when Jesus said the Father's word, the foremost word, the final word, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Now the Pharisee should not say again, she is a sinner. When a plate is dirty and the plate is washed, it's no more dirty, it's clean. When a soul is sinful and Jesus utters the final word and he says, her sins which are many are all forgiven. That woman was not a sinner anymore. And tonight, the Lord Jesus is going to speak the Father's word into your life. It's going to speak the foremost word in your life. It's going to speak the final word. And your guilt will vanish away. And all your condemnation, everything will vanish away. How? Because Jesus says that. That you're sorrowful for your sin. You regret all the sins you have committed. All the evil doings. And you have remorse, you have sorrow in your heart. How could I be so foolish and so sinful and so guilty and condemned? And the Lord Jesus said, that's why I came. I came to take your sins away. I came to forgive you. And he doesn't only keep quiet. He looks at you and he speaks to your heart. Your sins, which are many, are forgiven that's final i said that's final look at verse 50 in verse 50 it says and he said unto the woman thy faith has saved thee thy faith has saved thee when you come to christ look at that woman she came from outside feeling guilty and feeling condemned, she entered into the house. My brother, my sister, Peter was there. She didn't go to Peter. John, James were there. Didn't go to them. The Pharisee, the landlord of that house apartment, he was there. The woman did not go to that man. He spotted out Jesus. Why? 
Peter is not the father's word. Peter is not the foremost word. Peter is not the final word. She spotted out Christ, the Savior. Christ, the Redeemer. And she entered there and stayed by Jesus weeping. Her tears will not keep her away. Her sorrow will not keep her away. Her conviction, the conviction of sin, the terrible sinner, the most terri the most sinful person in town, all that idea did not keep her away. She came to Jesus. She repented of her sin. She cried because her past, her past life. And Jesus said, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Final word. No more condemnation. No more guilt because Jesus Christ has spoken. When Christ speaks in your life, salvation will come, redemption will come, pardon will come, forgiveness will come. Now you can go, the guilt is gone, the condemnation is gone, and you have peace, the peace of God in your heart in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, and I'm reading from verse 40. In Luke chapter 23, verse 40, and the other answering rebuked him. That is, there were two thieves there, and one thief was uh, talking nonsense. That is something that does not make sense. He was talking about Jesus. He was talking to Jesus, but he didn't recognize who Jesus was. So this other sinner, and they saw the thief answering the first sinner, the other thief rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Verse 41, in verse 41, we, you and I, indeed justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds. He said, you know you are a sinner, I know I'm a sinner, but this man referring to Jesus has done nothing amiss. He said, I know that this Jesus, although he is crucified, we are suffering for our sin. He is suffering for other people's sin. He's suffering for your sin. He's suffering for our sin. That's what the man said. He has done nothing wrong. Look at verse 42. And then in verse 42, and he said unto Jesus, a time comes in your life when you turn away from the other sinners, the other companions in crime. A time comes in your life when you don't stay there talking about, you know, whatever, talking about current affairs, talking about the people that arrested you, talking about the people that, that brought you into this situation. A time came in his life. He turned away from that other sinner and then he turned to the Lord and he said, Lord, he said, Lord, he said, you are now the Lord of my life. He was at the final stage of dying and condemned in his condemnation. And going to the place where sinners go, where sinners suffer, and where sinners are tormented for all eternity. Almost about to go. But he said, Lord, remember me. Remember me. When thou comest into thy kingdom. Look at verse 43. Now Jesus, the Father's word, is going to speak. Now Jesus, the foremost word, is going to speak. Now Jesus, 
the final word, the final word that that man heard before he crossed over to eternity. Look at that final word. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And no angel could, could change that. And the Father will not change that. And the people all around could not change that. It's a criminal. If the chief of sinners is a terrible sinner, that's why we put him on the cross there. Christ has spoken the final word. And in your life, when Christ speaks and he says today, your name will enter into the book of life, final. When Jesus says, everything you have done is forgiven and forgotten, final. When Jesus says, you are now son, you are now daughter, and he will prepare a place for you in heaven, and you will get to heaven, final. Jesus, the Father's word. Jesus, the foremost word. Jesus, the final word. Today shall thou be with me in paradise. I pray that word will be fulfilled in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Point number two. Number two, the spoken prevailing word of Jesus. The spoken prevailing word of Jesus. Now you understand? If Moses was to divide the Red Sea, he has to have a rod in the hand. If Joshua was to divide River Jordan, they have to have the priest carrying the ark and stepping on. If Elijah, Elisha, if they are to divide River Jordan, when Elijah was taken off, he has to have the mantle and he has to strike the sea. Jesus did all that, everything by spoken word. He spoke because, you understand, he, through his word, the, all the worlds, the universe, they were created. And he only has to speak to take your sickness away. It's through his spoken word. And to drive that infirmity, drive it away from your life, is through the spoken word. And the legion of evil spirits, of evil powers tormenting the man, driving him there and there, all he needs to do is speak the word. And that word, the demon cannot work a tail. After Jesus had spoken the final word. Look at Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, and it says, beseeching him, pleading with him, begging him. Look at verse 6, in verse 6, and saying, Lord, now you have to own him, Lord. Accept him as Lord. Believe him as Lord. Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. In verse 7, in verse 7, and Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8, in verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, he called him Lord again. He was now determined in his mind, he had looked at all his uh, dependencies, all he depended upon before. He said, I reject them. 
I cast them off. Other laws have had control over me before this time. But I reject their control. I reject their lordship. And I make Christ, Christ alone, my Lord. And so he called him Lord again. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only. Speak the word only. The word you spoke and the words came into existence. Speak the word only. The word you spoke and you restored calmness, stability, solidity into the world into the earth speak the word again because you are the father's word you are the foremost word and you are the final word speak the word only and my servant shall be healed look at verse 13 in verse 13 and jesus said unto the centurion the servant who was being tormented was far away. That servant was not readily available here for Christ to touch him. But does he really have to? You see, not the final word anywhere in the universe online. Is Jesus not the final word? On the radio as we are listening there, is he not the final word? On the television as we are watching, is he not the final word? Are you there in the audience? Do I need to come there? And do we need to pour any water, any oil on you and push you uh, so that you know you can have your miracle? At a distance, over there, the final word will come to your life. You will be healed. And you will be delivered. And so it said, Jesus said, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee the final word had been spoken and nothing can contradict that and his servant was healed in the self same hour that's how it happened every time in the ministry of Christ look at that ruler of the synagogue that came and said come down come down before my son dies and he says go back home your son lives. It is the spoken word. And it is the father's word. It's the foremost word. It's the final word. And then as was going, the servants met him. And they said, they declared, your son liveth. And he asked, when was the time that he got healed? And they said, at the seventh hour, yesterday, and it was the time when Jesus spoke. And that word is coming to you today. He will speak. And your infirmity and your sickness, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. In verse 16, it tells us that in the evening they brought many many when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. He will speak to you tonight. Amen. He will speak to your condition tonight. Amen. He will use his servant. And his word will come through his servant and get to you. And once you say the final amen, amen. you are through. Amen. You are healed. Amen. You are delivered in Jesus' name. 
point number three now is the sovereign perpetual word of Jesus. The sovereign perpetual word of Jesus. We're looking at Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He says, look up. Look at the sky. Look at the heavens. Even if they fall, look at the earth. Look at the globe. Even if the earth collapses, heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away that means when he speaks it will be fulfilled your salvation fulfilled your redemption fulfilled and your forgiveness fulfilled your new life eternal life once he speaks your feeling will pass away your thoughts will pass away. Even solid things, the heavens and the earth will pass away. But his word of salvation, his word of healing, his word of deliverance will never pass away. You get saved today, you'll still be saved tomorrow. You get saved today, you'll be saved throughout the month and throughout the year because that word of salvation will never pass away in your life in Jesus' name. You're healed today and your healing continues tomorrow, continues next week. Nobody, no I, no ear, no personality can change that healing in Jesus' name. Some who don't know about the perpetuity, perpetual, perpetuity of the healing of Christ, they say, I will not testify in the public. You ask them why? Ah, because I know Christ has healed me. He has taken my sickness away. He has taken my injury away. But if I go there and testify, somebody there may hear and say, what? So and so, he got healed. And then they take the healing away. Impossible. Help me shout impossible. impossible. That healing came by the Father's word. And no creature on earth, no creature under the earth, under the soil, no creature in the sea, no creature flying in the sky can take away the effect, the power, the manifestation of the Father's word, the foremost word, the final word in your life. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Tonight, Christ will speak to your very heart. And the blessing he gives, and the salvation he gives, and the healing deliverance he gives, will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, did, you, did you see all those people that came to testify online and they say they were healed 2021 20, December and they come out today and they say praise the Lord I am still healed. I am well. I am made whole. The same will happen to you. It doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. After the crusade, the healing will be permanent in your body. The salvation will be permanent in your soul.
did you hear that uh, young man from Benin Republic and uh, he said he used to cry he used to fast he used to do everything he was sorrowful because of the infirmity that he had but since that time the final word came into his life he stood there tonight and he said I'm still happy because that problem is gone and it is gone forever and your problem tonight will go and will go forever in Jesus name because heaven and earth shall pass away but his word of salvation to your heart his word of healing in your brain in your body shall never pass away you're receiving a blessing tonight that is permanent you're receiving a healing tonight that will continue you are, he, you are receiving the forgiveness, the salvation of the Lord tonight that will abide with you until the end of your life. Where are you? I said, where are you? The Lord has seen your hand. He's going to speak that word into your life right now. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed you want to hear his word spoken to your heart to say son daughter your sins are forgiven to say man your sins are forgiven woman your sins are forgiven and your faith has saved you salvation has come go in the peace of God this is your chance heads bowed eyes closed you raise up your hand you say Lord I want that salvation the salvation that does not evaporate after the crusade the salvation that remains the salvation that abides from the word from Christ the saving word the pardoning word is coming to you right now. Raise up that hand. Lord, I want that salvation now. Lord, I want that forgiveness now. The way you spoke to that man, to that important man, and you say, son, your sin be forgiven. Lord, here am I. Where are you? Raise up that hand. The way you spoke to that sorrowful woman, weeping because of the guilt of her sin and you say her sins which are many are forgiven i want to hear that word too raise up that hand if you are raising up your hand you please stand up you want to hear that perfect word permanent word pardoning word saving word Stand up wherever you are. God bless you there. Online, do the same. Do the same. He is there. He's everywhere present. Everywhere powerful. You're watching on the radio. Do the same. Indicate, Lord, call, call him your Lord. Savior, call him your Savior. And cast off all your sin repent of your sin and come to him now and make jesus the lord the savior of your life raise up that hand as you are standing up don't let this moment pass you by the peace of salvation will come to your heart the joy is salvation will come to your soul right there let's pray father well, thank you. You have given your word to Christ, to your only begotten Son. And when He speaks, He speaks the foremost word, the final word. Lord, I pray, speak that pardoning word, that saving word into every heart tonight. Save them in Jesus' name. Forgive them in Jesus' name. 
that let that sure, silent, saving word of assurance come into their heart right now and take all their guilt, all their condemnation away in Jesus' name. Pardon has been given to you. Peace has been given unto you. The salvation of the Lord has been given to you now by the pronouncement of the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saved. You are saved. You are forgiven. Your life now is transformed by the saving word of Jesus. Lord, confirm it in everyone. Thank you, Lord. Salvation has come. Forgiveness has come. Pardon has come. And that salvation will abide. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they will interact with you. Supply all the information they give you in the joy of the salvation you have now. We call on our officiating overseer tonight to help us during this counseling time. Then I'll come back. I'll pray for you. He'll speak the final word of healing, deliverance in your life in Jesus' name. The miracle of salvation has taken place already. I congratulate you. I thank God for what the Lord has done for you. He has sent the watch to you. And you are saved already. Tell all our counselors and give them the information that is needed. I bless the name of the Lord for you. You have been ushered in into the kingdom of God. I should be joy in your heart right now. Both in the Alpha location, online, on the radio, those who listen through the television, and the one in the hospital listening to the word of God tonight, the miracle has taken place. The Lord has accepted your decision. That you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Rejoice. Counselors, please go around and assist the people. And for the rest of us, let's keep praying. Tonight is the third night. Threefold miracles are waiting you. Whatever you want God to do for you, keep praying. There is pardon. There is peace. There is progress for you tonight. Prosperity, spiritual and physical are coming on your way. Keep talking to the Lord in prayer. Tonight is a night of jubilation. A night of rejoicing. When you are going to see the washers that have been set against your life for a long time. They are going to fall down dead. And you will rise up triumphantly and go back home rejoicing tonight. Counselors, go around. Let's attend to all the people. Our Father and the Lord will be coming very soon. And if you are watching online and you give your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link gckhq.org stroke connect below your player. Click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. The Father's word. 
the foremost word and the final word has come unto you tonight. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number that I will call now. Take your Bible and write down plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I say it again plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three we want to announce to you and remind those who have attended the lunch hour with Jesus yesterday and today that there's going to be another one tomorrow there will be a special meeting called lunch hour with Jesus. For all those who gave their lives to Jesus Christ tomorrow. And that will be by 3 p.m. Right on this ground in the school hall right here. Be there by 3 o'clock. You have special package waiting for you. And special blessings await you there. I want to announce to you, tonight is a special night. Everybody say, tonight is a special night for me. Say it loud. Threefold miracles are coming on your way. Say, Amen. You will not go home empty-handed. The... Bus drivers are patiently waiting, waiting for you until after you have received your miracle and you have shared your testimony. In fact, the drivers are waiting for their own miracle as well. They are not going to anywhere. Tonight is your night. Say tonight is my night. And your miracles you will receive tonight in Jesus' name. We want to announce to us that there's going to be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ since the beginning of this program that will come up on the 6th of August, 2023. This coming Sunday. More details about this will be sent to you. And our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet anywhere you are. Blessings await you. Ogbo Mosho Believers Banquet is coming up on Sunday, August 2023 at Life Bible Church. The nearest Deeper Life Bible Church to you, be there to attend. And it's coming up by 3 p.m. Don't miss it. The Lord is going to strengthen you there. He has promised us today, the Lord will give you strength. Strength to run the race. Strength to overcome. Strength to triumph. You will overcome to the end. Let me hear your amen. amen. Counselors, if you are true with your counseling, let me know. Wave the white flags in your hands to me at the extreme end. If you are true, let me see the flag.
To my left hand side, if you are true there, wave the flag and let me see you. At the middle, counselors, we are waiting for you. Do it thoroughly. That's why we're here. Gather all the information needed. To my right hand side, if the counselors are true, wave the flag, let me see you. Others should be praying, be asking God what you want to go home with tonight. One, two, three miracles, signs, and wonders. Tell the Lord. And as the word of God will come forth, at the end of the final amen, the peace of God that passeth all understanding will reign in your life. Because... You are going home with your miracle signs and wonders. I want to announce to every one of us tomorrow, everybody say tomorrow. When we started, we told you today is a wonderful day, the third day, and the miracles of the third day has started this evening. Tomorrow you are going to crown it up. Sunday was the day of resurrection. When Jesus Christ rose up, he rose up triumphantly. All the washmen that have been detailed to be washing the grave, they fell down as though as if they were dead. All the powers that have been detailed against your progress. All the power that have been detailed against your joy, your moving forward, your victory. Tomorrow as we come for the Sunday worship, they are going to fall down not as if they were dead or as if they are dead, but they are going to die completely. Let me hear your amen. As we are coming tomorrow, Invite your loved ones, family members, your friends and relations. We're having the joint worship here tomorrow and it's going to be wonderful. Packed full with blessings. We want you to come early by 7 o'clock. Be here to pray and come early as you hear the word. All the powers that have been detailed against your progress will fall down dead in Jesus' name. Give me good day, man. Yeah. We are waiting for the counselors. Wave your hand and let's see you. I can see the flag over there. At the extreme end, I can see the flag to my right hand side. Let's rise up now. Let's rise up now. The time of your miracle has come. Say it to yourself like that. And you will receive that miracle. Amen. Amen. Are you serious? The time of my miracle has come. Be it unto you according to your faith. What you have said. Heaven has heard will be fulfilled in your life. Any challenge you have, any sickness you have, any infirmity you have, lay your hand there. You're blind? Believe. Your eyes will be open tonight. Deaf and dumb? Believe. Because the word of power from Christ will come to you. Knock out that sickness, infirmity in Jesus' name. Raise up the other hand. Your time has come. After the final amen, your checkup, it's done. And today, 
you will give testimony. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the final word against our sickness, against our infirmity, against every disease. Lord, I pray there will be manifestation of healing and health and deliverance, dominion in every life tonight in Jesus' name. That sickness be healed in Jesus' name. Disease be cured in Jesus' name. Pain vanish away in Jesus' name. Any swelling, any part of the body be deflated right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Brain problem, you are delivered in Jesus' name. Ear problem, speaking problem, Deaf and dumb, be healed in Jesus' name. Mouth problem, smelling, be cleared off in Jesus' name. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, you cannot remain there. You have to give way and come out for the word of Christ to be fulfilled in that life. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Those broken bones, be joined together, family now in Jesus' name. Paralyzed, impotent, weak, Having arthritis, pain in the joints, you are healed in Jesus' name. Every other problem, at the mention of the name of Jesus, you must bow. Lord, I pray for confirmation in every life. Realization in every life. Miracle. Signs, wonders, healing, deliverance, victory, provision for everyone in Jesus' name. The Father's word has done it. The foremost word has accomplished it. The final word has settled your miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You have got it. Nothing can change it. You've got your miracle. In Jesus' name.